You know, recently, the best pizza in the world is not said to be in New York, it's in... Hey everyone, welcome to another sit down with Michael Francis. Hope everybody is doing well. All is very good, very blessed as always on this end. And as always, I give God all the praise, honor, and glory for that. Before we get started, 924 Saturday night, Atlantic City, Caesars World going to be appearing there. Tickets are selling very, very well, and I'm looking very much forward to it. Whenever I come back east, New York, New Jersey, feels like home. People are always wonderful. It's my kind of crowd, love them, love everybody, but uh, in particular back east, and uh, we're gonna have a great night, no doubt about it. We're gonna be doing a book signing. We're gonna take photographs, questions from the stage. We're gonna hear a lot about uh, the history of the mob, some myths that you may think are true. We're going to dispel them, talk about what it's really all about, and uh, we're going to have a great time as always. So that's Saturday, 924 Atlantic City at Caesars. And from there, I'm going into New York for a couple of days. Looking forward to it. Catch this. I'm going to be going into the prison to sit down and interview David Berkowitz, son of Sam. Very interesting. I don't know if you know this, he's become a Christian, he's read my books. There is a big book coming out about him from a dear friend of mine, a pastor who has been uh, working with him and visiting him now for the past several years, and um, I'm really looking forward to it. You know, we're going to talk about a lot of things that I think uh, impact a lot of people. Obviously, we know what his story was. I'm very familiar with it. It was during my era, you know, that uh, the son of Sam, David Berkowitz, was doing what he did. He's doing life in prison, paying for his crimes, but it's going to be an interesting sit-down and you all get to see it on YouTube. That's where it's going. So uh, that's going to be the week of uh, the 25th, I believe, of uh, this month of, of, no, of uh, September. So I'm looking forward to that. Australia is coming up first week of October in Sydney and Melbourne. Very excited about that. Love the people. Love the country. It's going to be great. Tickets still on sale. Get them now. A lot of VIP tickets have been sold, so I'm going to be interacting with a lot of people. It's going to be great. And then something really, really, really interesting uh, coming up. A company called Experience Cuban culture has taken me on and I'm going to be leading a delegation in early December of people taking them to the island of Cuba. And we're going to be talking all about the history of the mob in Cuba, something I'm very familiar with. We're going to be visiting all the locations, the casinos, the hotel, everything. And you're going to hear right from the horse's mouth what that was all about. Now, I don't know if you know this, but the mob had a very, very big presence just before the revolution. And when the revolution happened, obviously they lost that. And that's when they came to uh, Vegas and Vegas really started after the whole Cuban experience and these tickets are going to go really fast so uh, there's going to be a, a link up here to where you can um, get on and see what the experience is all about you have two months to go we're going to be talking a lot about that uh, over the next couple of weeks but uh, I'm very excited about it Cuba man I never thought I'd ever be going to that island but so much history there so many people that have visited there have told me Michael you're going to love it so it's going to be great looking very much forward to that so what are we doing today you know what Whenever I travel around the country, people always say to me, especially people from New York, Michael, I mean, come on, you got to miss the food in New York. The food anywhere else is no good. It's only in New York. And listen, New York has great food, no question about it. More of all ethnic type of restaurants uh, are in New York City because there's so many restaurants there. So you get more good food, I think, just because of the size of it and the amount of restaurants. But quite honestly, I've had great food all over the country, or really all over the world. I think a big reason for that is because these celebrity chefs that are all over television, that have their imprint everywhere, they've really raised the standard of the game. They really have. And now restaurants want to keep up with that. And food is pretty darn good everywhere. In LA, in Orange County right here where I live, uh, we have great food, great restaurants, you know, Italian especially, but all good restaurants. A lot of great sushi restaurants, steak, of course, you know, my favorite place is Fleming's. Uh, I love the place here in Newport Beach, go there all the time, but restaurants are really great. Great. But recently, I was in Italy. I think many of you know that we, uh, you know, we, we spoke to you from Italy. And uh, I got to tell you, you know, the Italian food there is just, I mean, I gained six pounds, lost it now, but gained six pounds because you can't not eat. Everything is so fresh. Everything is so delicious. 
Everything is kind of home style cooking and it's really great. You know, they tell you when you have a limited menu, those are the restaurants that you should visit because everything is fresh. When you have a real big menu and there's a lot of, uh, you know, different options on there, well then everything is not fresh. But you know, I could dispel that a little bit because we went to one place in Venice where it had a huge menu. The food was terrific. Everything was terrific. We ate so much. It was just wonderful. But let's, uh, let's talk about pizza because everybody seems to think that maybe outside of Italy, the best pizza in the world is in New York. And you know that I have something to do with a pizza business. Slices is uh, the name of it. Been talking about it for the past couple of years. There's a couple of stores that we have here in California. Uh, we've changed our model a little bit. I'm going to get into that. Not trying to sell the pizza. The pizza sells itself, but want to talk about that. But you're going to be surprised. You know, recently, the best pizza in the world is not said to be in New York. It's in London. And I'm going to read an article. I was fascinated by it. But there again, you know, celebrity chefs, wherever they go, they can go anywhere in the world. Once they establish themselves, if they're that good, then that becomes the place to go. So I want to talk about, I want to read the article. I think you're going to enjoy it. It's all about pizza. Who doesn't like pizza? I think I did something on this once before. Who doesn't like pizza? Everybody likes pizza. Be hard pressed to find somebody that doesn't. It's the number one food in the world. I know people are going to say, well, no, it may not be. There's some, no, pizza is the number one food in the world. No matter where you go, people love pizza. And in Italy, Forget it. It's terrific. But here's the article. Sorry, New York City, the best pizza maker in the world has been named, and he lives in London. The world's best dough slinger isn't working in a New York City slice shop. In fact, you'll have to catch a flight across the pond if you want to find him. This was in the New York Post, so across the pond, you know that saying, Atlantic Ocean. UK best Michel Pascarella, the founder of London's Napoli on the Road, has been named the best pizza chef on the planet at the World 50 Top Pizza Awards this week. And listen, the best pizza comes out of Naples, Napoli. My parents' hometown, both mother and father, they both come, that's where my ancestry is from. It's from Napoli, and Naples is known for pizza. All of Italy is, but Naples especially. And you know, every place you go in Italy, they make the pizza a little bit different. They really do, I'm gonna talk about that. The Chiswick Pizzaiola, who has been crafting pies since he was 11 years old, said his big win is, quote, a testament to pushing the boundaries of flavor and innovation within pizza. Hmm. It's just about crafting the perfect dough or finding the finest ingredients. It's about the artistry and passion that goes into every slice, the pizza visionary said, according to uh, this article in Time Out. Now, I will attest to that. When Tony, guy I know for 30 years out of Brooklyn, his father was a baker, great chef, great, you know, he, he's just terrific, right? When he said to me a couple of years back, I want to be in the pizza business again. And I said, Tony, you know, what are you going to do with pizza? Everybody and their brother is in pizza. What are you going to differ do differently? And he said, give me six months to a year and I'll show you. So with that, he takes off, he goes to Italy, and there he stays for months and months and months and comes up with one of the best pizzas of pizza you will ever taste. I mean that. I'm not being biased. I'm telling you it's the truth. But I have even a little more twist to this that I'll get into. You know, the best pizza that you're going to taste, it's terrific. It really is. But there's something even more special, which I'm going to talk about. All the ingredients from Italy, the dough is, uh, is his special recipe, the flour, the way it's mixed, his special recipe, the tomatoes, everything, special recipe that he um, created from spending all that time in Italy, and believe me, it's terrific. But let's read on. As Pascarella's last name suggests, the UK transplant is originally from Italy, and he moved to England when he was just 19 years old. Four years ago, he opened Napoli on the Road as a traveling food truck business, started as a food truck, visiting various markets in London. Pizza looks terrific. His menu features the classics such as margarita and pepperoni, listed as diavola, as well as some vegan-friendly options. You gotta have vegan-friendly today because so many people order it, so many people are vegans, you gotta have it. So you gotta come up with a good tasting vegan anything. Pizza, of course, also. But his signature pies seem to be the draw of his eatery and includes pizzas topped with parma ham, aged for 24 months, tuna filet, or ragu sauce made with lamb. Now I gotta tell you this, my guy Tony created a pizza uh, with clams on top that was out of this world. 
I mean, delicious. I just absolutely loved it. Yes, pizza with clams. I mean, the toppings, you could be very creative as long as you put it together the right way. You don't just throw it on top of the pizza and say, all right, this is a new creation. No, you have to do it the right way. You got to blend the right spices and tasting in, and it's terrific. Could you imagine clams on pizza? Did you ever taste it? Delicious. I'm telling you, it's great. And here we've got tuna filet or ragu sauce made with lamb. Very creative, I'm sure it's terrific. Pascarella, who has been hailed as the pioneer of contemporary pizza, has scored a number of accolades, most recently crowned in May as Pizza Maker of the Year for 2023. So the best pizza in the world for this year, Pizza Maker of the Year, is in London, 2023. I'll be there, I'm going on tour again uh, next March, so I'm definitely going to visit him, no doubt. That award, he told the Chiswick uh, calendar, is like the Michelin Guide for pizza. Everybody knows the Michelin Guide. By the way, if you live in Newport Beach, you go to this restaurant, Bello. Dear friend of mine, he's a great guy. Sandro is his name. Yes, born in Italy. He just got the Michelin Award again. He's had it several times. Best restaurant out there. He's terrific. It's called Bello. It's in uh, uh, Newport Beach. Visit it. See Sandro. Tell him I said to you. He'll take good care of you. But while New Yorkers might be peeved by the pizza prizes, it's not all bad news. World 50 Top Pizza also named the best pie places on the planet with, bi with a Big Apple eatery landing in the top three. So, so two out of three uh, of the best pizzas in the world were from New York. The judges named the Lower East Side's Luna Pizza Napolitana in third place. Terrific, I've had their pizza, wonderful. Behind two pizza joints in Italy, Diego Vitagliano Pizzeria in Naples and uh, Mazzanelli in Caserta. So that's a pretty good honor. You know, New York is great for their pizza. Experts in the Big Apple have long been divided over where to get the best slice in the city. Ask any New Yorker, you'll get a different answer. Joe's on Prince Street, great. Patsy's, Joe and Pat's Linda Street. Even uh, if they use Barstool founder David Portnoy's one bite rule, weighing the sturdiness of the crust, the gooiness of the cheese, and the tastiness of the sauce, it appears no one can come to a consensus. You see all those items? Weighing the sturdiness of the crust, very important. You don't want a pizza that sags, that you know you pick it up. And by the way, in Italy, you know they eat pizza with a, a knife and fork. So it does sag in the middle. They eat it with a knife and fork. They don't pick it up like we do in America and fold it and eat it. Very interesting the way they eat pizza. So weighing the sturdiness of the crust, the gooiness of the cheese, I don't know if that's the right word, gooiness, but the cheese has to be melted, you know. You know, when you put it in your mouth, you got that string that's hanging down into the plate, but that's delicious. I also like when there's a little oil on top, you know, and that's from the cheese, not from olive oil. It's from the cheese when you see that oil. And the tastiness of the sauce. Well, of course, the, to the sauce has got a good, the sauce has got to taste good. It appears no one can come to a consensus. But according to Helen Rosner of The New Yorker, Scar's Pizza, S-C-A-R-R-S, -R -R -S, Scar's Pizza may just take the cake, air pie. That is 60% pizza and 40% vibes, she writes. I don't know anything about that. Scar's, I never ate there. Scar's crust, she says, is light, tangy, and sturdy. The sauce, bright and fresh. The za itself has admirable structural integrity, she adds, succumbing neither to sag nor to sog. Well, that's good. I mean, if the crust doesn't sag or it's not soggy, that's good. Please, people, don't ever put pizza in a microwave. Don't do that because you're going to ruin the pizza. Pizza has to be, the, the bottom has to be a little bit crusty. Whenever I order pizza, I order it well done because I like the crust to be sturdy. You don't want it soggy. You don't want it, you know, hanging down when you pick it up. Although, like I said, in Italy, a lot of times it might be because they eat it with a knife and fork. And they start from the center and they go out to the crust. Very interesting. I did that too when I was there. Here's what I will say. Any list of great pizza that leaves off scars shouldn't be trusted. This is according to this woman. She declared, pleased by uh, the even smear of tomato sauce and lack of grease puddles. Well, okay, but you don't have grease puddles on pizza. That comes from the cheese, really good cheese. Sometimes you get some, some oil or grease coming from it, if you want to call it grease, but that's delicious. The restaurant slice is excellent, just this side of faultless. Okay, well, she likes that. That's very good. Anyhow, that's the article. Now I want to tell you something. You know we were in the franchise business for a while at Slices. Changed our model. Changed it totally. A guy from France, he comes from France, he's French, and he invented a pizza vending machine. Now, I want to make sure I say this right because it's very, very unique in that it's AI powered. It doesn't work on microwave. It's not a microwave oven. 
It's AI powered, and my partner explains it best. We're gonna throw up a little video. Now, we're not soliciting you for any reason. This is not anything else. But here's the difference with our pizza slices, okay? I'm telling you, when you see this machine, we're gonna throw a little video up, and it's gonna be all over the country pretty soon in America. And my partner is actually in China right now and Japan because they've expressed interest in this vending machine. You know, part of the reason people can't get people to work anymore. The labor market is depleted. You cannot get people to work, okay? We have showed this uh, slices machine in, in Hyatt hotels, in some major department stores. Play, everybody that sees it wants it because it's like a 24 hour day restaurant. And here is the key. I don't care what kind of machine you got, how great it is. If the product coming out is not good, who cares? It's all about the product coming out. And I will tell you this, our pizza, slices pizza, coming out of this machine tastes like it just came out of the oven. And not too many pizzas can do that. It's because of the texture, the way our dough is made. It's the way the pizza is created. It's our recipe that only this pizza can come out of that vending machine like ours does. I'm gonna be very, very brief about this. There's probably a day when I do a whole a uh, whole video about it. Again, we're not you know, soliciting money or anything. I'm just telling you because when it does end up in your neighborhood, try it. You're going to love it. I'm telling you. You know, the church that I belong to, uh, the pastor of that church, I'm not going to get into anything, he loves our pizza. When he heard we had this vending machine, he said, please bring the vending machines into the church. People will love it. And I said, okay, but I don't want you sneaking out at night to go back to the church to get pizza because it'll be there. But it's unbelievable. It's amazing. Very excited about it. And I'm telling you, this is the thing of the future. You're going to see it certainly all over America. Everybody is demanding it right now. We can't keep up with the demand that we have on it, but we will. We'll catch it. We'll get there. And it's amazing. But the pizza is terrific. I keep wanting to, I keep wanting to tell you that because when I first heard it, I said, pizza out of a machine? Come on, give me a break, you know? Some of these machines out there, they're, they're starting them already, but they're microwave. No good. You don't ever put pizza in a microwave. I'll say it again. Anyway, that's it. So what do I say? The best pizza in the world as of 2023 is in London. So if you're ever there, make sure you stop by this place. Uh, but hey, uh, remember, Slices is coming to your neighborhood, probably in a department store, maybe a hotel, maybe a college campus, maybe in the airport. It's going everywhere, so watch out for it. You're going to love it. And remember that I told you, Michael said the pizza is great. And when you do finally taste it, send me an email. Send me a you know, message on social media. Let me know if I was telling you the truth or not. So that's it for today, my friends. How do I always leave you? Same way. It's not going to change. Be safe. Be healthy. God bless every one of you. And from now on, I add this. God, please bless America. We need your blessing here in this country. Yes, I'll see you next time.